I'm getting ready to wire up the auxiliary power or optional power for my Honda CB500X. I wanted to show you the parts I'm going to use. So I had some 12 gauge boat cable so I just took a short piece of that. This is pre-tinned so it's going to work well when you need to solder. And the course of Technic pins. So the pin 2 is the appropriate size for a 12 gauge wire and this seal SL2 is the appropriate size for this wire. So when you do this, make sure you want to strip the ends about a quarter of an inch or a little bit less. Make sure you put the seal on prior to adding the connector or soldering. These pins, the first set of tabs is for the insulation. The second set is for the connection to the wire. So you can crimp these on using a pair of needle nose pliers and then solder it. Since I don't have the appropriate um, open barrel F style crimp tool, I'm going to use a pair of needle nose pliers to crimp those onto the end of the wire and then solder the joint. When you crimp this style of connector, you want to pull on it, make sure that the connector is on good. You, don't, you want a very firm, solid connection, good crimp. Should, the connector should not come off when you pull on the connector to wire connection. This is what the connector should look like after you get done crimping it on. So the wire is clamped up with the second set of tabs. And the first set of tabs should be wrapped around the both the insulation and the seal. And hopefully that will keep the seal in position as you go when you seat the pin into the connector. On the other end, you want a good firm crimp. You should be able to pull on this and not get any movement in the connector. It should not come off. So that tells you you've got a good firm mechanical connection. I like these heat shrink versions. You can sh provide some uh, weather resistance for the connection. These may or may not seal around the end, so it can be a good idea. You can add some uh, liquid electrical tape or some additional sealant if you don't get fully sealed at the connector. So I have the pin soldered onto the end of my wire with a good solder joint. This is the connector off the bike. The 2016 comes with seals already on the connector, so I've taken the half of the connector off, removed the bottom seal. So on the, the hot wire is the purple red wire on the bike. And on my bike, that is in the bike's position, it's the lower connector, the lower pin. The upper pin is the green wire, which is ground. So I've removed the seal for the lower portion of the connector. and. The way this pin goes into the connector is the flat part goes on the side of the latch, on the external latch, and on the inside, the pin latch is on this side of the connector. So when I slide this connector in there, it should latch in there. If I can get this seal in, and the pin should snap into position. So with a 10 gauge wire, the seal is very tight in the connector, so I used a drop of oil to lubricate the seal and then just slowly work the seal in using a very small screwdriver. And then I had to use a pair of pliers to push the pin the rest of the way in, but then it snapped in. So my plan right now is to use ground off of the frame ground or find another source of ground rather than using the ground wire on the connector. So I'm looking underneath the seat of the Honda. The option power connector is normally under, right underneath this bar right here. I've removed it from its little mount. There's a tab on the connector you can push and it just slides off the mount. And I've rerouted that wire from, it used to come up here. I've taken this fuse box out. You can pull a little tab on this side and it pops up. And rerouted that wire. 
underneath and up this channel. So what I'd like to do is fit my Blue C fuse block right in here under the seat. But this plastic standoff is in the way. I don't know what this is for. There's nothing underneath the fender where anything would mount to this. So I'm just going to cut this out using, like, try to use an oscillating saw and see if that works. That'll provide room to fit this fuse box neatly right underneath the seat. The oscillating saw made really quick work of that standoff. So now this fuse block fits in here really nicely. All I have to do now is plug in my connector and connect the terminal to the hot side of the fuse block and I will have power on my fuse block. And here it is installed. I trimmed some of the heat shrink off of the ring terminal on my power wire so I get a good solid connection here at the input on the, the uh, fuse block. And just wrap the wire, routed the wire down as I showed before. This wire is now good running underneath this fuse block here. I'm not sure where I'm going to find a ground wire yet. So if you remove the side fairing off the bike, one of the frame grounds is right here, but that looks, it's pretty well used. I, would think, I was thinking about using this, but I don't think I will. Um, I may come up and maybe run a ground wire off just the negative terminal of the battery. I don't see another really good source for ground underneath the seat. So that may be my best option, right, is just to run off right off the battery. So I've completed the wiring of the bike. So I'm going to go over and show you where I've routed the wires and the wiring installation. So we'll start back here under the seat. So I've got the Blue C fuse block nicely tucked in there wired up to the optional connector and the wires coming from the front of the bike into two fuses. This little tab right here if you press on this it'll open up so you can run the wires underneath it. it gives you more access underneath this thing. I decided to go ahead and use the ground right off the battery. It was the most convenient. I've only got two items powered right now so there's still plenty of thread engagement on the battery so that was the best spot for that. I routed the wiring from the fuse block underneath this is a channel underneath here underneath here and then the wiring comes out underneath the frame right next to the battery here and I've got several cable ties tying the wire into the frame to keep it wiring nice and tight. Wiring is running up underneath the tank and then I have the last cable tie to the frame right on the top. There's two holes in the top of this bracket. Makes it really convenient to run a cable tie and run your wiring through there. For the wiring that's going up to the instrument panel Right in the inside, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show this. On the inside of the cowl, there's a what looks like a plastic black screw head right here. If you take that out, it's just a filler. There's actually nothing that that screw plastic screw doesn't hold anything. It's just a placeholder. So if you take that out, there's a really convenient spot to run a, a cable tie and tie your wires right to the inside of this plastic piece. I've you can see it from this side, wrapped it around and captured this other wire as well. So from there the wiring runs up to my gear indicator and then got the wiring running up to my X mount with the integrated USB on the bottom. Makes sense to put it on the bottom to keep water from collecting in there. And the other wire which is for my extra USB power outlet outlet 
I've got run up underneath the fork through the this bracket that is for the clutch cable. And this particular, this is the Moto Power outlet. It has the SAE connector here, so you can just connect it and put something else in. And I've just zip tied the outlet right to the top of the uh, triple tree. Pop the cap off, and the outlet's right here. So this, this would be convenient if I, when I get around to mounting something onto the handlebar, or maybe possibly mounted something off of the uh, mirror stems. So that's the installation. It's very easy to do. It took me maybe maybe an hour, hour and a half, mostly messing around with getting the side pieces off of the bike and getting the wiring on nice and tightly bundled up and um, length correct. So on, on both of the installations, I have just enough wiring to get the wires to the block. There's not much extra in here. So this position seems to work pretty well with the length of wiring I've gotten off of the accessories so far.